So, um, hearing those stories about Washington Environmental Council and Boyer, they remind us about the impact that we can have on organizations and on the people and the ecosystems they serve, and just as fundamentally the impact that they have on us. <clears throat> so let's look ahead. Very simply, why a new direction for SVP? The answer is simple. <clears throat> Our community needs us to be more and to do more because of the challenges that we face, challenges that sometimes feel insurmountable. <clears throat> So this region's population is going to double over the next 30 years. So our challenge is how do we maintain our wildlife and our natural resources while balancing that with good growth. <clears throat> uh, half the kids in Washington State still start kindergarten and they are not ready, they're not ready to succeed in school. And barely a quarter of kids in South Seattle and South King County will ever reach a college degree or credential. There's also an equity piece here. <clears throat> if you look at the amount that philanthropic organizations like SVP, like the Gates Foundation, contribute to kids in the Seattle area for things like books and after school programs and teacher training, <clears throat> that adds up to 400 bucks a kid. <clears throat> if you go across the county line to South King County, <clears throat> that number drops significantly. So we need to be mindful of that <clears throat> as well. So in the light of these complex challenges, what is SVP ready to step up to? So here's what we know. We also know big problems can be solved and progress can be made. Let me give you one simple example. In Milwaukee, Milwaukee used to be the, had one of the highest rates of teen pregnancy in the country. Their businesses, their government agencies, their nonprofits, they would try to work together and continued to fail <clears throat> until they decided that they had to work together, unique but aligned, systematically, intentionally, for the long term, towards one shared goal. <clears throat> and at that point, no one owned the problem. Everyone did. <clears throat> they were all accountable. So what's happened six years later is they have brought that rate down by 31% in just six years. That's what can be done. <clears throat> I'm positive that in 2006, they believe that kind of drop, that kind of rate of progress is probably insurmountable. <clears throat> and Milwaukee's not alone. There's a national movement these days, term collective impact, that's about communities working in new ways, aligned, sharing goals, to tackle the toughest social challenges in their community. <clears throat> so not only is SVP ready, <clears throat> uh, we are a national movement, <clears throat> and we are sort of a collective impact on our own. <clears throat> so <clears throat> today, where SVP is at is we have some very unique strengths. Developing philanthropists, our expertise in strengthening organizations, knowing about collective action, that we can bring to the table with funders, with agencies, with nonprofits, with government groups, with businesses, to create more collective impact together. <clears throat> That's where we're at. That's what we are ready to do. <clears throat> we have also helped over the years to develop effective philanthropists, <clears throat> strengthen nonprofits, and invest in collaborative solutions. And we showed you the results of that at the start. But we're ready to ask the question, to what end? Right? <clears throat> we also have said broadly that we care about kids being ready to succeed, about a stronger community, about a healthier environment. But what does success really, truly look like? <clears throat> to what end? And what would success truly look like? <clears throat> so is SVP ready to answer those questions? Let me ask that again. <clears throat> is SVP ready to answer those questions? <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> what that means is signing up for clear, specific, shared goals. Shared goals with a broad range of people in this community. <clears throat> it means that we want to own <clears throat> Children enter kindergarten ready to learn. 
It means that our youth graduate from high school on time, ready to succeed in college or a career. It means that Puget Sound is a sustainable community where sustainable communities, excuse me, can thrive, balance economic growth with quality of life, and are built in natural environments. Those are very big, bold statements. <clears throat> We're not going to achieve any of that on our own. We are going to share accountability for them. The Gates Foundation says there's not a single problem that they can solve on their own. So if they say that, <clears throat> then I'll take their word for it. <clears throat> Right? We don't have to do the work to sort of define the indicators for success. <clears throat> we can leverage other people that have done that. Um, let me turn the page. <clears throat> we also don't have to be the expert in environmental educational issues. What we can do is bring our expertise in philanthropy development, capacity building, and collective action to the table with these organizations. So <clears throat> we are ready to sign up for three community goals externally aligned with a broad range of players in this community. That is a big honking step for us. <clears throat> At the same time, we are also going to align our work internally better with those community goals. <clears throat> See if the slide gets there in a second. <clears throat> One more. Bingo. <clears throat> so that means things like Looking at our philanthropy development, our educational curriculum, how do we better align it with those community goals? It means how do we better connect our collective action investments with our new grant committees? It means how do we apply our capacity building expertise better to collective action work? <clears throat> and how do we run all of that thing, all of that work through an equity lens so that our work in the community is effective and so that we show up in a culturally confident way to be effective and be connected to our community? Right? That's a big series of steps for us. So just to be clear, we will remain fully committed to our core work with philanthropists and nonprofits, our new grant committees, capacity building, education, capacity build, I said that, general operating support. We remain committed to that. But what we are going to do is, number one, sign up for three shared goals in this community. And number two, we are going to line up our work internally <clears throat> with those goals. And we're going to do all of that so that we can create more impact for us, for SVP, for the whole community. <clears throat> this is a big step for us. And it's going to play out over time. <clears throat> what I would say is that we have been getting ready as an organization to aspire to, to sign up for these bigger goals. We have been getting ready to do a better job of aligning our core work. <clears throat> we have been getting ready for now. <clears throat> There's a quote that I love. Uh, the moment one fully commits oneself, providence moves to. <clears throat> Whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, promise, and magic in it. Begin it now. Well, <clears throat> it's now. <clears throat> so are we ready? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, I like that. <clears throat> So that's where we're going. That's the gist of it. <clears throat> Tried to give you that to you really straightforward. We're going to give you some information later on to take with you too. There's been a ton of partners, board members, volunteers, community members that put a lot of time over the last several months into creating this new direction for us. I'm going to have three of those people share with you what it means to them and to try to continue to make what I just talked about more real for you. So we're going to start with Sherry Wilson who will talk more about what it means for SVP to work collectively and some of the ways in which we have started down that path. Sherry? Hi, uh, I'm Sherry Wilson. I chair SVP's Education Collective Action Team, the EDUCAT. And as you've heard, for SVP, collective action means a community-wide effort to tackle a large social challenge. The very best of these collective action initiatives have a common agenda, a shared measurement system, and a backbone support organization. Now, when I'm not at SVP, I spend a lot of time playing tennis and captaining a tennis team. In fact, you might not recognize me tonight because my usual attire is a ponytail and a tennis skirt. 
I'm dedicated, some might say obsessed, with both tennis and SVP. The thing that I love about team tennis is that it provides a supportive community. Yes, you take the court for your match as an individual or as a doubles partnership, but while you're training and strategizing and preparing for that match, you're surrounded by people who share your ambition to get better and to win. For me, SVP has always been similar. Partners might have different pet issues or approaches, but everyone wants to see improved educational outcomes and a better environment. Our aligned community goals and commitment to collective action make our SV teams, SVP teams approach even clearer. And when we get bogged down, we can remember our shared goals and ask ourselves whether our efforts are pointing us towards the right result. Our collective action work also gives us the opportunity to try a new approach to solving our most difficult problems. When I'm playing tennis and standing too close to the net, if my opponent keeps lobbing the ball over my head, I don't just stand there and think, bummer. No, I t maybe I take a step or two back, or maybe I go all the way back to the baseline to try a different solution to this problem. As Paul mentioned, SVP has unique strengths to bring to this community-wide effort, and our collective action teams have already put these strengths to work. In education, the EDUCAT has funded three current or past investees with capacity building grants designed to support collective action. So, for the Vietnamese Friendship Association, we helped fund a coalition of very small, community-based nonprofits that are bringing minority voices to collective action and other decision-making processes. On the environment side, the Collective Action Team is providing funding and capacity building support to FutureWise and Puget Sound Sage, two organizations that work at the intersection of environmental sustainability, economic prosperity, and equity. SVP also co-chairs the Sustainable Funders Collaborative, a group of regional funders who have pooled dollars to bolster investments in the environment, the economy, and equity. I hope you share my enthusiasm for SVP's community goals and collective action efforts. Our aligned community goals state loud and clear that we are part of the community effort. And our collective action efforts say we're not satisfied with the status quo. We will always be searching for and experimenting with ways to help create a better community. I look forward to reporting back to the partnership that these efforts have helped Team Seattle make significant improvements in our community. Thanks, Sherry. So Todd Vogel is going to sort of amplify the role of equity and cultural competency in us being effective in the community with this new direction. Mr. Vogel. Yeah, that's better. All right. Um, if you're interested in a healthy environment and getting people to do the right thing, I've got a riddle for you. How do we put $10,000 a year into people's pocket and reduce our region's carbon footprint at the same time? I'm Todd Vogel, I'm an SVP board member, and I've been a member of a number of SVP's environmental committees. The answer to that riddle makes SVP a more effective organization. So how does that happen? In the Puget Sound area, getting to work and school can take a third of a person's income. That means that every hour they work until May goes just to pay for transportation. People who live near transit can more cheaply get to their jobs. It's about $10,000 a year cheaper. And they lower their greenhouse gas emissions, and that's not just by a little bit. They lower them by more than half. Unfortunately, housing costs much more near transit lines, and low-income populations are often forced to drive longer distances. That makes it tougher for them to afford life's necessities, like housing, food, or their children's education. This is just one example in which wide gaps in opportunity upset the best laid plans of our community. So why should access to transit, or our children's access to education, or even their life expectancy depend on which zip code they live in. That lack of fairness really upsets me. But it turns out it's also an opportunity for us. A focus on equity and fairness can empower SVP. Using equity as a lens 
will accelerate our impact, and it is the key to achieving the shared goals that we've signed on to. Simply put, it makes us more effective. During the last year, more than 20 partners and community members studied whether our resources are getting to the places where they, make, do, they do the most good. Our Diversity and Cultural Competency Committee mapped SVP's uh, investments and relationships in the community. And we found that SVP does a great job at building not-for-profit capacity. Not too surprising to us, right? But we also learned that we're not perfect. In fact, we need to figure out how to make investments work best for the people most affected. We are learning that. We're learning that, and we can, that we can do more to amplify our impact by identifying where the gaps are greatest and by putting more of our money there. Our committee is developing new ways for SVP to work with the community more deeply. We will also create an equity filter to help us understand where to invest our funds for maximum impact. One early example of SVP's collective action team um, example is SVP's collective action support for Transit for All. That's the collaborative solution that Sherry just mentioned a few minutes ago. It shows how equity helps us to do more because our investment there supports the transit needs of some of us and supports the environmental needs of all of us. It's this kind of win for everyone that gets me excited. SVP is using equity and fairness to help our environment get better and our community get stronger. And for me personally, working to ensure that every person in the region has access to opportunity begins to give the world some order that I can live with. It assures me that the sometimes brutal part of our community or our world, the part that says you've got a handicap because you were born in the wrong zip code, cannot snuff out the caring core inside of each of us or defeat our impulse for action. SVP is better positioned than ever to help us step in that direction. Together, we can be the architects of our collective fate. Thank you. And uh, last but not least, our board chair, Janet Levenger, is going to talk to us about how we can each grow the potential for SVP to have even greater impact. Janet. It's like rave. <laughs> Definitely. I got it. I got it. I, I could reach it, Todd. Really, I could. <laughs> Todd is our chair-elect. They wanted somebody taller. So. Um, so I've been asking myself a question lately. Why do I do what I do? Why am I here with Social Venture Partners? I've been a partner since 1997. And I told somebody recently that I think I'll always be a partner. I haven't told my husband that, but just so you know. Um, I've, I've grown so much with SVP. And part of the reason is what I see right here in this room. This room is filled with smart, passionate, action-oriented, caring people. It's so much fun to be with all of you. It's, I learned so much from all of you. But I also know that by being an SVP partner, I've been able to make a difference in ways that I could not have done alone. Because by pooling our resources, our time and money and talent, by working together, we have much more impact than we do alone. And making more impact is exactly what we've been talking about today. I think over time we've all been humbled by the complexity of the problems we, ch we face. We know that if we're really going to solve complicated problems, such as having all kids graduate from high school with good opportunities, or having our environment be a healthy place to live, it takes more than individual organizations, however hard they work, but working in isolation. Solving tough problems takes lots of people in lots of organizations all working together. It takes listening to and including the people on the ground and the people we want to serve. So that's what the board, the staff, and many partners have been focusing on, aligning what we do internally and externally to make sure we're positioned to operate effectively as one of many working toward common goals. I'm actually feeling really good about this evolution, and I've been in every single one of those meetings. So, and the board has made sure that we have the staffing and the structure to support these changes. But there's more. 
I am really proud to announce that for the first time in our history, we have surpassed 300 partner households in SVP Seattle. That's more than 500 individual partners in our local network. And I want to applaud Lisa Merrill back there. Wave your hand, Lisa, who chairs our outreach team. But I also want to challenge you, because most of our new partners are referred by current partners. So I want to ask you to please be an ambassador. Ask people to join. Remember, when you invite someone to join SVP, you are giving them an opportunity to engage, to grow themselves, to have more impact. You're offering them an experience that's been meaningful to you. So we try really hard to make being an ambassador easy. You can invite people to our monthly prospective partner receptions or to events such as our spring meeting or happy hours or to our fast pitch, which is on November 13th this year, a little over a month away. There's some information in your, it's in your name tag about the fast pitch. And there's stickers in your, in your name tag as well. And I just see I'm going to be Vanna and model. The sticker is supposed to go on your phone or your computer or your tablet. And it's to remind you to at, tell people about SVP. And I've truly had people say, OK, I'll bite. Tell me about SVP when they see this. So it does work. I also want to ask you to engage. So I know everybody's time varies by week and month and year, and I don't want to pressure anybody or make anyone feel guilty. We don't expect everyone to put in dozens of hours all the time. And some people don't put in any hours at all, and that's OK, too. But our model does depend on people volunteering with our nonprofits to help build their capacity. And we heard that today from our executive directors about how much that means to them. And our organization does require that we have volunteers to serve on grant committees or to be mentors for the fast pitch. We have lots of volunteer opportunities, some long term, some short term, some with investees, some internal. These are opportunities that are listed in our monthly newsletter. Or you can contact Karen Johnson or Becca Stevens. Wave your hands, ladies and they will help you find one that works best for you. So as you heard tonight, we're moving in a powerful new direction to have more impact and to be more responsive to our community. And this requires investment. As you know, in the past year, we've changed our funding model. Instead of asking everyone for only $6,000, we are asking you to give to SVP according to your capacity and your passion for our mission. The response has been excellent. Many people give $6,000, which is a generous gift and truly appreciated. But some people give $7,000, others 10 or 15, and a few actually give more than that. So last year, we raised $380,000 in additional revenue, money we were able to put towards our collective action investments, towards diversity, and an additional grant committee. So SVP is our partnership. I just want to remind you, we all have to take responsibility. We can't just rely on Paul or the staff or the board or other partners to step up. So I want you to take some time to ask yourself, as I did, why do I do this? Why am I part of SVP? And my guess is that when you find the answer, you will inspire yourself to invite new partners to join, to get more involved, and to make an investment. Because it's true, working together, we do have more impact. Thank you. OK, a couple of things. <clears throat> First of all, if you have, which I'm sure you do, thoughts, questions that you want to share about tonight, a really good set of people to ask or to tell about that <clears throat> would be a staff or a board member. So if you're a staff or a board member, would you raise your hand just so everybody knows who the heck you are? And by the way, I should add that we have four new board members with us here tonight. <clears throat> Tony Mestres, Tim Shotman, Kathy O'Driscoll, and Mike Cadigan. <clears throat> so thanks to the four of you for turbocharging our board. 
<clears throat> We're also handing out to you a postcard that has those three community goals on it, and it also has a link to a bunch of FAQs and more information about what we talked about tonight. Um, and every time we do these, we send out a survey the next morning so you can sort of, you know, tell us about the food or the, you know, the setting or whatever. Please, Phil, we're going to ask you more on this, okay? We want to know what you felt about what you heard tonight and how you feel about this. What makes sense to you? What are you energized about? What confuses you? What do you not get? What do you like? What do you not like? It's really, really important that we hear from you guys. There's no way we can do something like this and answer everybody's questions tonight. We wanted you to get the core, <clears throat> right? We are signing up for three shared community goals, and we are lining up our work inside of SVP to create more impact. And that's the gist of it. <clears throat> so if it raises questions for you tonight, believe me, it does for us too, <clears throat> right? We are going to learn. We're going to change. We're going to keep learning as we go through this. You know, but aren't we, isn't SVP ready to sort of like dive into those hard, gnarly, difficult to answer questions? I think that we are. Aren't we ready to sort of like go deeper into that hard, messy work? <clears throat> That's where the challenges are. That's where you meet them. That's where the solutions are found. I think that's where we're ready to go. So before we end tonight, I want to, I want to share one more brief story with you. <clears throat> so I think a lot of us probably remember or know about the 1936 Olympics in Berlin. <clears throat> Jesse Owens' famous exploits. In that Olympics, there were seven rowing events. So the first six of them, singles, pairs, fours, were won by Germany. They won them by wide margins. The last of the rowing events was the eights. And just like when Jesse Owens won his four gold medals, Hitler was there watching that day on that final race. <clears throat> so the eight American row rowers were sons of loggers, shipyard workers, farmers. They had all just finished coming through the hardships <clears throat> of the Depression. Um, none of them had rowed before all eight of them got to college four miles north of here <clears throat> at the UW. That's what that dub is on there. <clears throat> so these were just regular people going up against these full-time, <clears throat> professionally trained, essentially professionals for Germany. <clears throat> so just this past summer, there was a book written about this called The Boys on the Boat. <clears throat> um, and their story is largely told through the eyes of Joseph Rance. He's one of the eight that was on that boat. And he told this story as he was dying in 2007. So if I may, I just want to read a really short excerpt of that story for you. This is in the author's words about Rance. <clears throat> Quote, <clears throat> Rance talked about learning the art of rowing and shells and oars, tactics and techniques. He reminisced about long, cold hours on the water under steel gray skies about marching under Hitler's eyes into the Olympic Stadium. <clears throat> None of those recollections, though, brought tears to his eyes until he tried to talk about the boat. <clears throat> then his words began to falter, and tears welled up in his eyes. <clears throat> so at first I thought he meant the husky clipper, the, the, the boat shell. Or did he mean his teammates, the improbable crew? Finally, what I realized was that the boat was something more than just the shell or its crew. <clears throat> to Joseph Rance, it encompassed but transcended both. <clears throat> it was something almost beyond definition. It was a shared experience, a singular thing that had unfolded when eight good-hearted young men strove together, pulled together as one, gave everything they had for one another, bound together forever by love and respect and pride. <clears throat> now Joy was crying. Joe was crying in part just for the sheer beauty of it. <clears throat> so the last rower of that crew of eight, he died in July in, in Maple Valley. <clears throat> and that's their boat <clears throat> at the top in the outer lane where the water's the most turbulent. <clears throat> where they overcame the German boat in the last 10 strokes of the race. <clears throat> so
So clearly, there is so much that's different between Germany in 1936 and where we are tonight. <clears throat> but <clears throat> there is a victory that we're after. <clears throat> and I will tell you, I think that the enemy that we face today is <clears throat> the belief that problems are insurmountable. <clears throat> Everybody here tonight, you are a rebuke to that failed belief. <clears throat> Right? That's why you're here tonight, because you believe that we can make that progress. And rowing, sort of the synchronicity, the, the utter interdependence of them is such a beautiful metaphor for where we want to go with SVP. Uh, we've made an impact, but we have more to do together. <clears throat> We're not in this alone. <clears throat> it's a hard, long race, everyone rowing for each other. We are defining clear and specific community goals. We have a destination in sight, a singular thing. We've signed on to goals that we share with others. We're not alone in the boat. We're striving together. We are aligning our work within SVP. Our strokes are in sync, rowing together. And we will bring SVP's unique strengths to the work ahead. Boats need a bow pair. They need a middle crew. They need a coxswain. <clears throat> The only way that those eight UW rowers won against that enemy was by rowing together as one, bound together by pride and respect and love. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we need you in the boat. You knew that was coming, right? <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> we want you to get on board <clears throat> if you're not in it. If you're in that boat, row harder and smarter with us. Increase your investment. <clears throat> Be our ambassador. Grow this network. Please make SVP in our future an even greater way for you to have impact for the next 15 years. <clears throat>